And then turning to the 37th chapter, uh, we see once more uh, the restoration of the people of the land. We saw much about the land itself in the 36th chapter, where God actually spoke to the land, and we wonder how the land could hear. But it was God's prophecy uh, to the land. But now we have the big question, how is God going to restore the people uh, to the land? And the first 14 verses of the 37th chapter uh, will give us uh, much information on that particular line. There are about five questions that I would like to uh, present to you, and we will be discussing them one at a time as we go along. The questions are this. By what process is God going to bring the people back to the land when they are still in unbelief? In other words, if they do not believe, how will he bring them back? That's question number one. Second, how will he bring them to conversion? Third, how will he remove their sins? Fourth, will he raise up a king to reign over them or with them? And fifth, how will he remove the enemies of the people of Israel? Now, the key to these questions is found in chapters 37, 38, and 39. These are the ones we will discuss this week. Read them carefully. Ezekiel 37, 38, and 39. If you have not read chapter 36, be sure and read it by way of further introduction. Now, uh, back to the 37th chapter, and we read verse 1 to begin with. The hand of the Lord was upon me, Ezekiel speaking, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of dry bones. Quite a place that he took him, a valley full of dry bones. And uh, here we wonder, what is he speaking about? Of course, we know that the whole prophecy is concerning Israel, but how can we interpret this? What is the picture? What is he trying to show? Well, a valley, first of all, speaks of suffering. So it was a valley, a place of much suffering of the people of Israel. Take, for instance, Psalm 23, 4 uh, gives us the key. I, I like the Bible for this reason. It always interprets itself. And you, you just look around and you'll find the interpretation. Take the uh, Psalm then, 23, verse 4, he says, Yea, uh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. There you find the reason and the meaning of the word valley. It was a valley of the shadow of death. And this is so true concerning Israel. All right, first then we see uh, a great valley. Then in that valley, we saw many bones. Yes, and these bones, we wondered about that. Uh, but he says it was just full of bones. And in verse 11, by the way, the Bible explains itself again. The first 10 verses give us the fact of what uh, he saw, what he was to prophesy, and so on. And then beginning with verse 11, he begins to interpret those. And listen to verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. I'm emphasizing that. These bones are the whole house of Israel. So you see, I'm not guessing when I say that these bones speak of Israel, but not only speak of Israel, but they speak of the whole house of Israel. And then he was on to say, Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off uh, uh, for our parts. Now the valley was full of dry bones. So it, the dry bones speak of all the tribes of Israel. Secondly, the valley was full, speaking primarily, there were many, many, many bones. And then verse 2, uh, he goes to emphasize uh, it a little bit more again, when he says, And he caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. That's the description. Very dry. Again, in the 11th verse, uh, the explanation. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we're cut off from uh, our parts. In other words, we belong to him, but we're, we're cut off. So, uh, simply saying, our hope is all gone, parched, bleached, buried in the graves of the nation. Something needs to be done. Yes, a great miracle needs to be done. Death has done its work. They have been buried among the nations. Now the big question how can these bones live? Let's look to verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, 
Can these bones live? What a question! And I answered, O Lord God, Thou knowest. The question, Can these bones live? Of course not. Bones can't live, just bones like that. No. Uh, the, the life is all gone. But instead of uh, Ezekiel answering, Now, Lord, you know that that's impossible. And the world would have said, Of course they cannot live. They're a bunch of dead bones. But uh, Ezekiel says, Lord, you know what you're going to do. I'm looking to you for the answer. You're not going to get the answer from me. You're the God of creation. You know whether these bones are going to be able to live. So if there ever will be life in these bones, he's saying, uh, it is more than a prophet's work. It has to be God's work. It has to be your doings. And so once more, turning to the 11th chapter, uh, 11th verse, rather, he says, We have become a heap of dried out bones. Our hope is all gone. So what does God say? All right, Ezekiel, you say it's up to me. You say that uh, you know uh, that I know what I'm going to do. So all right, Ezekiel, here's what I want you to do. Listen to this. This is something out of the ordinary. Never, you never find this anyplace else. But he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy unto these bones. Preach to these bones. What an audience. What an audience to preach to. I know we and you, and I've preached for 55 years now, and I've preached to many a deaf audience before, but I have never preached to an audience like this. Absolutely a bunch of dead bones. What prospect of an answer can there possibly be here if I preach to a bunch of dead bones? And the sermon, he says, O oh, ye dead bones, hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> can that dry bones hear? Where do they have ears? Ah, only God can do this. He that hath an ear, let him hear, he says. And so I think you better prick up your ears, because God says, I can do something about this. And so in verse 5 and 6, uh, I read these words. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and I will cover you with skin and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. All these things God says I'm going to do. So God reveals the various steps, then, of the restoration. Verse 12, uh, the explanation here gives us further word, then. Listen to this. Therefore prophesy. This is just an addition to what he said before. Before he just gave him the words, now he's giving, giving him the explanation. And he says, go ahead now, Ezekiel, you prophesy and say unto these bones, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. The answer is, I'll bring you out of the grave. They were buried in the graves among the nations. That's what he's talking about. Only God knows where all the twelve tribes of Israel are. I hear people constantly say, well, where are the 12 tribes of Israel? Uh, where, where can we find them? <laughs> I don't have to find them. God knows where they are. And he says, you're like buried in the graves of the nation. The world may not know where you are, but I know where you are. And I'm going to open those graves of the nations and bring you out of there. And so the prophet was obedient, and he preached unto these bones. Listen to what he preached. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Can you imagine Ezekiel being obedient to God and starting to preach to a bunch of dry bones? You know what I was just thinking about? When I was just beginning to preach, my first year in the seminary learning to preach, and I had to preach my first sermon, you know where I went to practice? I was close to the country there, and there were a bunch of tree stumps out there, and I just preached to a bunch of tree stumps. Now, that's just what I was just reminded of this. Not that they could hear or understand anything I said, but uh, I had to kind of get that message into my soul and into my heart. Well, anyway, uh, here he is preaching to a series of dead bones uh, that were in the valley. And uh, uh, furthermore, in verse... Uh, well, we've read 7 and 8 now, he says, And when I beheld, lo, the sinew of the flesh came upon them, and the skins covered uh, about, and there, but there was no breath in them. That's another statement now. 
first there was a noise, a great noise, and a great rattling, and a great shaking, a noise of persecution. Verse 11, uh, I think, answers that. And he says, these bones of the whole house of Israel, they were dried and they were uh, uh, in much persecution. There was a shaking for recognition, a rattling for world attention. And we have been seeing that in Israel these days. You see, we're seeing the beginning of the fulfillment of these promises. A shaking for recognition, that's exactly what Israel's doing. A rattling for world attention. And then it says they came together. This speaks of organization. This speaks of restoration. And in May 1948, we saw the beginning of the nation of Israel. There we see the beginning of this restoration. They began to come together. Sinews and flesh are for strength, for coordination, and for unity of action. We're just beginning to see some of these things. The skin speaks of protection. Uh, that's what protects our, our body. And that, that, no doubt, is referring to the armies. And they have certainly some wonderful armies and in, for self-defense. This indicates successive and distinct stages of development as we begin to see them in Israel. Another translator put it this way, and suddenly there was a rattling noise uh, all across the valley, and the bones of uh, each body came uh, together and attached to each other uh, as they used to be. And as I watched, uh, the muscles and the flesh formed over the bones and the skin covered them, uh, but the bodies had no breath. I almost wanted to ask our quartet to sing a, a little spiritual song that they sometimes sing more uh, just for a special entertainment uh, about the dry bones, but it was really too silly and too... It didn't belong on the Back to Bible broadcast, but you possibly heard the song. The dry bones came together, all right. But verse 8, the last part of the verse says, but there was no breath in them, meaning simply no life. So the people of Israel are being brought together into the land of Canaan. We've seen only the beginning of it. There's going to be a greater in gathering, but they're coming in mostly in unbelief. They are absolutely lifeless. Oh, I know there's some that were looking for a Messiah, but they are not accepting Christ as their personal Savior and Messiah. The first great work is done now. We're beginning to see that, uh, but more is to follow. And so even uh, Ezekiel was said uh, to prophesy a second time because he said, but there was no breath in them. There was no life in them. So God says, all right, Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy. Say unto them, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy unto the wind. Yes, that word wind is the same word that is translated breath or spirit. In the 14th verse, he says, and ye shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live. So prophesy to the wind, he says, thou son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, uh, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came upon unto them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. The second prophecy, wind to the spirit, to the breath, uh, at Christ's return, they will live when the Spirit of God will do something very, very special in them, not only national life, but also spiritual life. Our time is just about gone. I wish I could have read, but why don't you read uh, parts of the 20th chapter of Ezekiel, beginning with verse 35, when he says, And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. There I will plead with you face to face, like I pleaded with your uh, fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So I will plead with you, saith the Lord, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into a bond of fellowship, and I will purge out of you uh, the rebels, them that transgress against me. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, for I will bring you into the land of Israel, uh, into a country for which I uh, lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. And they shall then shall ye remember your ways and all your doings, wherein ye have de been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight uh, for all your evil and ye, that ye have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought with you uh, for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. God is at work. 
Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.